welcome back to Studio 5. You could call it a constant mini trial that all women have in common, daily stress that wears you down and sometimes works you up. My next guest says almost all of our female stressors fall into three main categories. And here's the smack your head sort of truth. You have the ability to do something about it. Studio 5 contributor Connie Sokol is an author and founder of the Back to Basics program. So these three categories of stress, really almost every bump in our day can fit into one of these. Yeah, I mean, there could be a top five, a top 10, but when I put this on my Facebook page, I was seeing all the things that they, people, women were saying, and I started seeing this pattern of this right now, these kind of top three. So that's where I picked them out. And each one of these has really applicable solutions that you could implement today. Yes, absolutely. And I think, I love that we can do something about these and we don't have to feel like we're stuck. So the first one is self-care. And I think this hands down, this is the most important one, simply because, well, for women personally, because I, I looked at the pattern and I thought, we know this. We, we understand there was this thing of there's too much to do and I have too little energy and I don't know how to handle these things. I don't know how to go about this. And I thought, wait a second, we know that self-care works. Why don't we do this? We're smart women. And I think one of the reasons why is perception. We have this perception that we don't, it's not okay. It's, it's being selfish and that's not the case. But I did look through and say, there's two kinds of self-care. There's the physical and then there's the emotional. And so I think both of those are really important. And when we talk about that self-care, then you talk about making it a priority in your day. That's How right. can we do that and still maintain the daily responsibilities so those don't become stressors that's in and of right. themselves? Exactly. And there's that balance. So on the physical, for example, being able to say, I value my health. We have to value basic health and do it 80% of the time. Time to eat well, time to exercise, time to sleep. Now I know you're laughing because I know I'm laughing. But and after you have a baby, that just goes out the window. Oh, but truly on a daily basis, if you can say, if even if one of those areas, you can say, I'm gonna focus on this for right now, it will domino into the others. I think you're a great example of this because a lot of women might say, okay, yes, I want to exercise. I know I should. I don't have time. I don't have an hour, Connie, to go to the gym. You're really great and creative about fitting your exercise into your Day. <laughs> well, I you try. Are. I have my sweet little chubs, and we go to Zumba, and he sits right there, and I give him snacks and half the house, and then I do my Zumba, and I keep <laughs> looking at him and smiling. And he brings me my shoes now and says, "Go dancing, go dancing." Aww. So it's it's this connection too, and that's part of our self care, and that leads into the emotional. We we sometimes think that that's going to take away from our kids, and that's what I did as a young mom. I didn't learn that early. That I thought my piano, my writing, my speaking, that I did single, it would take away from my kids. So I put that aside. It doesn't. It gives back. Now you adjust. You adjust to how you do it, which is great. But as you do that, it expands their interest. It expands them. I know a friend of mine that the only time she could play the piano was late at night when the kids were going to bed. And mm -hmm. she worried that we'd keep them awake, but she played. And years later, her son called her from college and said, oh, I heard one of those. I think it was a Brahms lullaby. I heard the Brahms that you used to play when, when we were little. How much she gave to them of her. Mm -hmm. And that's what's so emotionally healing and self-caring is if we share who we are with our kids and not lock it away, then that creates that daily self-care we add and we don't take away. It's not a surprise that finances made the top three oh stressors list. Yes, which I find kind of funny because we have as women, we deal with it on a daily basis, but there's this kind of unease about it. And I think it's because most of us feel we don't have a solid grasp. And that's okay. But one thing that's a great way to start is from the book, Smart Women Finish Rich. It's David Bach. He is great. And one of the things he talks about is plug the leak. So go through your online bank statements, get rid of the guilt and just go through them and say, what's the top five areas that are leaking? What is it that I just don't know where it's going? Are we going out to eat too much? Am yes. I spending too much at Target? Whatever it is, find yes. that, identify that problem. Exactly. School book orders, whatever it is. And then once you do that, take a 30 day challenge. And as a family, sit them down and say, we're doing a 30, 30 day challenge, say no. So when you're driving, they go, oh, we want to go to Wendy's. It's after soccer and we're starving. Say, oh, we're going to go home and have sandwiches and then take Monopoly money, put it in a jar and say, gee, we would have spent $25 at Wendy's. So let's put it in the jar and it will be a visual to teach your children how much we're going out and how much we save by not doing that. And I know we're talking about eliminating the stress in our lives, but that's a brilliant parent teaching moment too. Oh, it's so helpful because this issue right now with this entitlement, this lack of delayed gratification that kids are experiencing, it's following them into their adult lives and it is really wreaking havoc. So when we teach them early, hey, look at the margins here. If we don't do this now, we save up for Disneyland later or something. Mm -hmm. Make a strong, clear financial goal that the kids can point to. They get that idea of how this works. Well, I think the idea, the challenge of curbing that delayed gratification problem that we know is such an issue feels so big to parents, but something as simple as skipping the Wendy's drive-thru once yes. and explaining why 
why it's those small little nuggets of information, right, that they will collect over time. No pun intended. No exactly. Pun <laughs> No pun intended. Save the 99 cents on the nuggets. And That's put right. it in the Monopoly jar. This third one kind of surprised me, I have to admit. You, in the women you talk to, you say connections are a stress. How, yes. how come? They were worried that in this digital, superficial world that we live in, that they were not getting the deeper, more meaningful connections and conversations with their kids. And rightly so. Because if you look at an average week or an average day in a woman's life, she's running. She's carpooling. She's, hey, how you doing? Did you do that? Great. Let me see your backpack. Get the, get the homework. And it's on to the next thing it's you're doing. Flurry. Yes. And it's not eyeball to eyeball and not connection to connection. And so one thing that we can do is to seek, actively seek for those moments. Don't be guilty about it. Just seek as you start the day, say, who do I need to connect with in my kids? Who do I need to connect with today? Just yesterday, we're folding laundry and I'm usually, the kids are folding and I'm putting stuff away. And my son happened to be in the laundry room with me and we were talking and, and had this great connection. Just a few minutes, didn't have to be a big deal, but it was this connection. It was sweet and it was wonderful right there in the laundry room. So. That's what we need to do is seek for those moments. And then once we have them, don't be functional with the to-dos. Make it a part of what you're doing. Driving on the go, make it a part, get the eyeballs, have that meaningful moment. Don't you think half of it is just recognizing it? It's not the big grand mommy-daughter yes. date that has to be planned out and scheduled weeks in advance, but it's yes. just being consciously aware those connections can happen in the laundry room in small moments. Absolutely. Laying on the floor, being outside in the grass, looking at the bubbles, whatever. And it's only a couple of minutes. It doesn't have to take a long time, although if you can, that's great. Great advice to hopefully combat these three stressors that leak into women's life on a daily basis. We want to pause and say congratulations on a new book that you just put out. Yes, and it came about from this. It's on um, what every sixth grader needs to know, 10 Secrets to Connect Moms and Daughters, and it came from these kind of conversations that we've had with our sixth graders. And today we're having a Facebook chat on Talking With Your Tween right after Studio 5 on www.facebook.com slash 8, the number 8 basics, and it's on for 99 cents just for today for viewers. I love those good Facebook conversations. Connie, you will be at the heart of that and we'll link people over if they want to click and connect with you.